Hey there, this is Mr. Wistar, and in this lesson we're going to talk about how to design algorithms to solve problems. We'll talk about what an algorithm is and what makes an algorithm an effective algorithm, and then we'll talk about some different strategies you can use when you're trying to design algorithms uh, when you're writing computer programs. So, let's talk about what an algorithm is. So, the definition from uh, one of my textbooks is it's a sequence of steps that's unambiguous, executable, and terminating. So just to unpack those um, terms, what we're looking for is a, uh, a set of instructions that's clear and that is guaranteed to end at the desired um, final condition. So you may not have much experience designing algorithms for computer programs, but you actually have a lot of experience with algorithms in your life, if you think about it. Anytime you have a set of steps that's designed to accomplish a task, that's an algorithm. So just as a couple of examples, if you have cooking recipes or if you have uh, different plays that you run on your sports teams or if you're putting together Legos, those are all examples of you executing algorithms. Here's an example. So let's say that you need to go to class in the morning. A very uh, basic algorithm would just be wake up, get dressed, eat breakfast, go to class. Now, that's probably not in the level of detail you would need to tell somebody who's never done any of those things before but it is an algorithm it begins at the beginning condition and it successfully ends at the ending condition when we talk about our algorithms what are we looking for in an effective algorithm it should be written at the appropriate level of detail you know this algorithm is probably an appropriate level of detail for you being a high school student but maybe not at the appropriate level of detail for uh, a seven-year-old. You'd need to give them much more specific, smaller instructions that they could execute one at a time. You also want it to be effective and efficient. So let's uh, distinguish between those two terms. Effective means that an algorithm works, that every time you can guarantee that it successfully accomplishes the task. Efficient means that it accomplishes the task in a short amount of time or uses a small amount of resources. So you can have an algorithm that's effective but not efficient. Um, what you're looking for is an algorithm that can do both. And then lastly, it's nice if your algorithm is easy to modify. If there are ways that you can extend it or expand it without having to redo the whole thing. There are some strategies that we can use when we're trying to create our algorithms. Um, Normally what we do first is we have to establish uh, where we're going to begin and where we're going to end. Uh, because you need to know where you're going to start in order to know what your uh, conditions are to work with. And you obviously need to know where to end because that tells you uh, what steps you need to take. Then most of the time algorithm design consists of taking this big task and trying to divide it up into smaller tasks that you can combine to achieve the ultimate goal that you're looking for. Then you're going to write down your uh, algorithm in what we call pseudocode, which is a set of instructions that's like code, but it's not really exactly code. And then you're going to test it, sort of just walk through it in your mind, make sure that it works properly. We're going to look at a technique for algorithm design that uh, includes all of those strategies in this class called stepwise design, or sometimes it's called stepwise refinement. It's what we call a top-down design approach, meaning that you begin with the overall strategy and then you break it down into uh, smaller tasks. And each level uh, of your stepwise design is going to get progressively more specific until you eventually get it to the point where you either are writing design steps in computer code or you're so close to that that you can just take it from there. So let's take a look at the example from our slides where you are trying to get to class. Every stepwise design begins with what we call level zero, which isn't really a set of steps. What it is is this just uh, restatement of the problem. You um, list your beginning uh, uh, starting point and then you list your ending point. So in our case, we're going to be starting off asleep in our bed and we need to end up sitting in class uh, properly dressed, properly fed, with all of the equipment that we need. Now, my rule of thumb for stepwise design is that for each new level, 
you shouldn't expand any step from the previous level into more than five steps. If you're including more than five steps, it means that you need another level. So let's take a look at what level one might look like. So here's level one. You should look pretty familiar. This is the what we had in our slides. So this is fine. We can work with this. It's fewer than five steps and it does accomplish the goal. Again, every level of stepwise design needs to be a complete solution. All right, so how do we get from level one to level two? In order to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each of these steps and we are going to break it out into uh, up to five new, more specific steps. So that would look something like this. So for example, we would take wake up and we would expand it into three steps. Notice that we still have the previous um, level listed there, and then we just list all of its sub-steps underneath it as um, more detailed instructions. Also notice that for each level, if you read sort of vertically down the most specific um, set of instructions, you still have a complete algorithm. So if I just follow everything with a uh, period uh, in it, I will have a complete set of instructions to accomplish this task. So this is level two. This is probably an appropriate level of detail even for a middle school student, but let's just say we needed to make it even more specific. We could go to a level three. So if we go to a level three, here's our level two. We're gonna copy and paste it. It's always easiest when you make a new level to just copy and paste the previous level because you're gonna reuse all of that text. So now we're gonna take each of the steps from level three and we're gonna restate it as a more specific uh, each of the steps from level two and restate it as a more specific step in level three for the most part. Uh, sometimes there's a step from a previous level that you really can't put any more detail into like open eyes and if that's the case when you get to the next level you should just restate it um, in the next level. So here we have step 1.1 open eyes, step three or level three it's 1.1.1 open eyes. The reason why we're going to essentially repeat the same text is that that way again we still have every every vertical level is still a complete design so I can just read down all of these um, steps with two periods in them and I still have a complete design. So some steps like take shower um, we decided that we did want to expand into multiple steps and then there are some steps like go to the dining hall that we really can't make more specific. Maybe we could, but we're just not choosing to in this case. So here we have, wow, this is a lot of steps in level three. I can't imagine we would want our design to be more detailed than level three. Um, you can have up to, um, gosh, 125 steps in your level three if you need to go that far. Um, but there's no rules uh, about, there are no limits. You can keep designing your stepwise design as far as you need it to go before you feel like you're ready to start coding. Okay, so just to recap in this lesson, we talked about what an algorithm is and what makes an algorithm effective. Uh, and then we also talked about some strategies for creating effective algorithms, including this stepwise design, which takes a t uh, large task and breaks it down into smaller and smaller steps. All right, you're all set.